the last few years have seen some noticeable improvements in VFX and other industries like game development. While challenges still exist, as you may know, there have been some strides in technology, work culture, and other stuff that are worth highlighting. Whether it is tools for artists, the way they collaborate, in addition to other stuff, and generally, there is a lot that's been moving in the right direction. So today, I wanted to talk about that, and I also want to hear what you think about this in the comment section down below. One thing I have noticed, and I'm sure you have too, is how much VFX has expanded in the last 5 years, especially when it comes to movies. Sure, blockbusters like The Avengers or Dune continue to push the boundaries, but the exciting part is how smaller projects and even TV shows are benefiting from these advancements. Streaming platforms like Netflix and Disney Plus have leaned heavily into visual effects, not just for big budget sci-fi or fantasy movies, but also for subtle things too. For instance, in the past, they would rely on practical sets and location shoots for authenticity. And now, VFX is used to recreate entire cities from centuries ago, down to the smallest cobblestone detail. Films like 1917 and The Crown used VFX to subtly enhance scenes adding depth and detail you might not even realize is computer generated. And even indie movies are leaning towards VFX. With the tools becoming more affordable and easier to learn, smaller studios can create effects that rival what is used with movies requiring millions of dollars in budget to create the VFX. And movies like Everything Everywhere All at Once showcase how a creative team with limited resources can pull off stunning visual effects that can look like a high-budget movie. And honestly, this shift isn't just about making things look great. Directors are using VFX to tell more ambitious stories and visualizing concepts that wouldn't be possible otherwise. Think about the rise of visual production, where tools like Unreal Engine are used to create real-time environments for actors to perform in. So it's not just saving time and money. It's allowing filmmakers to take risks and explore new storytelling techniques. I think what's exciting about this trend is how it democratizes filmmaking. VFX isn't just reserved for massive budgets anymore, because honestly it is becoming a creative tool for anyone with a vision, and this is actually a big leap forward to create any story. And in the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you why things are getting better and better with recent advancements. The last five years have honestly seen some impressive advancements in both hardware and software. For example, GPUs have gotten faster and more affordable, making high-quality rendering achievable even on personal setups, but to a certain degree, of course. This is a big deal for freelancers and indie creators who might not have access to expensive render farms, so the work can be done on their computers in a shorter period of time because it can never be as efficient as render farms, to be honest. Software has also improved. Houdini, for example, continues to set the bar for procedural workflows, and Blender has become a serious contender in the 3D scene. What's great about Blender is that it is open source, in addition to being free and constantly updated, and it is supported by a passionate community. For smaller studios and indie filmmakers, tools like Blender, Unreal Engine 5, and DaVinci Resolve have made high-quality production much more accessible since they are free for everyone. On the accessibility front, real-time rendering in engines like Unreal Engine has changed the game. Now, real-time workflows allow artists to see changes instantly, cutting down iteration times and making the creative process much smoother. For many, this has made the difference between finishing projects on time and missing deadlines which is a big difference, I would say. Then there is AI. It's always been a hot topic, especially in the last couple of years. But hear me out. People often worry that AI is here to replace artists, and for a good reason. But that's not really the case. It's more like having an extra pair of hands to deal with the boring, repetitive stuff so you can focus on the creative work. 
take tasks like water sculpting or match moving. These are jobs that used to take days, sometimes weeks. But with the automation using AI tools, now you can handle them faster. And just to be clear, if AI takes over the creative process, I'm not a fan of that at all. One other area that has seen massive growth in the last five years is the adoption of USD, which stands for Universal Scene Description. And this is happening across many industries. Originally, USD was developed by Pixar, and it has become a backbone for collaborative projects, especially in large studios. And it is essentially a file format and a framework that makes it easier for different software to work together seamlessly. Whether you are dealing with Maya, Houdini, Blender, or even Unreal Engine. USD's strength lies in how it organizes and handles assets. It supports complex layer structures, meaning that you can store models, animations, lighting, and even shaders in a single coherent file. And this makes version control and collaboration a lot easier, especially on large projects where there is multiple artists working on different parts, I mean of the same scene at the same time, and some working in the office and others working remotely. So this is a great tool and an amazing leap forward. Speaking of remote work, this shift is one of the most profound changes in the industry according to many VFX and game development artists. Before 2020, I mean before the pandemic, working from home was practically unheard of in the industry. Because to be frank, studios expected artists to be on site, working long hours tightly packed in office spaces. Then the pandemic hit and everything changed. Studios had no choice but to adapt and remote work suddenly became the norm. Many artists found this transition liberating because there is no more commutes, no need to uproot your life to move closer to a studio and it provided a better work-life balance especially for those with families. As one artist said, gig hopping is a lot easier if you don't have to commute to new places or even move home every time. End quote. It's not just about working from home, it's about working from anywhere, and this freedom has been a massive relief for artists who felt tied down by studio locations, especially when you keep in mind that some jobs last only a few months, so you will have to move every time. I would add to that that this becomes even more important when VFX artists need to work long hours of overtime, and I think this becomes easier for their families because they are already with them and they don't feel like they are missing out on living their lives as much. That said, not all studios are fully embracing remote work, because many have adopted hybrid models, requiring artists to come on site for certain days or weeks, especially during crunch periods or collaborative phases of a project. And generally, employers argue that some aspects of production, like brainstorming, troubleshooting, or fine-tuning work, are smoother with face-to-face -face interactions. Some artists too, especially juniors, feel like they are missing out on valuable face-to-face -face mentorship. And I would say, it is hard to get spontaneous feedback when you are not physically in the same room. But still, the shift towards remote work has opened many doors for many making the industry more accessible and flexible for a wide range of talents, especially professionals who have been working in this industry for a long time. Another area where things have started to shift is labor rights, because five years ago, unionization in VFX was almost non-existent, and the same can be said about game development too. And today, we're starting to see movement in this direction. Studios like DNAG in Canada and even big names like Disney and Marvel have seen parts of their workforce unionize. And I think this is a step towards better pay, benefits, and working conditions in the industry, which has been long been plagued by crunch culture. Overtime pay has also become more common. A decade ago, working extra hours without compensation was the norm. And now, some studios are starting to pay over time, especially as unions push to fair payments. It's not widespread yet, but it is making progress. That said, not everything has improved, because many studios still operate on razor-thin margins and job stability can be elusive. The industry remains competitive, and generally, while unions help 
there is still a long way to go before CG artists feel fully protected. And generally speaking, while there have been improvements, the industry still faces significant challenges. Job security remains a major issue, and this has become more clear, especially in the last couple of years. And this is especially true for freelancers and contract workers. Studios often operate on a project-to-project -project basis, and layoffs are common once a production wraps up. This instability can make it hard to plan for the future. And another challenge is the ever-growing demand for faster turnarounds. With advancements in technology, generally clients, since they are not knowledgeable in this field, they expect things to be done faster, putting pressure on studios to deliver high-quality work in less time. And this often leads to crunch, but as I said before, things are getting better and some studios are paying their employees over time. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next one.